Hello and welcome to another standard video. Today I'm going to use the word copy a lot since we're first going to copy our instance and sorceries and eventually copy permanence as well using doppelgang. And to make that happen we're building around cursed recording. This 4 mana artifact can tap saying when we cast our next instant or sorcery spell this turn we get to copy it and choose new targets for the copy. So a very powerful effect that can accumulate a lot of value. Now there is a little bit of a drawback I should mention when we cast an instant or sorcery spell with a record in play it will pick up a time counter and once it has seven or more of those counters it will deal 20 damage to us. So we do want to try and close out the game or at least remove our own recording before it gets to that point. Now the real fun starts happening once we have multiple cursed recordings in play and we can make that happen by copying our own cursed recording with cards like three steps ahead which can be used as a three mana counter spell but if we cast it for four mana we get to make a token that's a copy of target artifact or creature we control. So let's say we have our curse recording, we tap to activate it, and then now we get to copy or three steps ahead, making two copies of the curse recording, ending up with three total in play. And then if we have any additional ways to copy it, things can get out of hand very quickly. The eventual goal being to cast a large doppelgang, usually for x equals three or more, and then for x target permanent. So let's say three target permanents create three tokens that are copies of that permanent. So this could also copy the curse recording but can also start copying lands and creatures that the opponent might have as well so that can also give us a win condition if we copy the opponent's creatures a bunch of times but we can also copy our own creature land restless vine stock turning into a 5-5 with trample so that can also close out the game once we make a few of those so that's the game plan. The rest of the deck is mostly a control deck since we do need to have lots of interaction to survive all the aggro decks, but there are some additional synergies that I'll walk you through. So starting out with our one drops, full set of Torture Tower as a nice efficient removal spell, very good against all the red aggro decks since this can exile opposing creatures, plus it also has Bargain, which can sometimes be a way to sacrifice our own cursed recording so it doesn't get to seven counters, so that's another important interaction to keep in mind. Now into the Flood Maw cannot bounce our own permanence since it only targets opposing stuff but can also be a cheap answer to opposing creatures or even non-creature permanence if we give the opponent a fish token which is sometimes worth it and then a pick your poison a versatile answer to artifacts enchantments or flying creatures so it can also be an answer to the red ley line if the opponent starts with it on the battlefield but can also answer a nice variety of enchantments and flying creatures that see play in standard then at 2 mana we've got a new sweeper that's been reprinted in standard, Pyroclasm. Can also get better if we copy it so we can deal more damage if needed. And then we've got more exile based removal with Scorching Dragonfire dealing 3 damage by default. Fires of Victory, good to cast early but also good to kick later in the game, especially if we can copy it a few times and draw additional cards in the process. Cease and Desist plays a few roles in the deck. It is an expensive card we can potentially discard to the ill-timed explosion, since it counts the combined mana value, so we can deal 8 damage to creatures. It can be a cantrip early, gaining us a little bit of life, gives us a bit of main deck a graveyard hate with a Cease half, and then with a Desist half we can potentially destroy all artifacts and enchantments, so it can also be a panic button in case we end up with too many counters on our curse recording. And then a Cease can actually also be a win condition. Let's say we do have 15 or 20 copies of our curse recording can easily happen in this deck then now we can target the opponent with a cease half and then essentially mill them out by forcing them to draw a card each time so that can also be a fun interaction and then at three mana or well technically still two mana there's joint exploration although we prefer to cast it with kicker so we get to put an extra land in play to help us ramp can do so at instant speed so we can still keep up our other instant speed interaction in the aggro matchups or maybe keep up a counter spell and three steps ahead is perfect here since it can also help copy the curse recording and in a deck with a bit of ramp it becomes easier to cast three steps ahead with multiple modes and all three of them could be great here and then we've got Brotherhood's End as another sweeper, can also deal with artifacts. And then finally, the Ill-Timed Explosion gives us even more sweepers. So we've got six total in the deck, but can also be four mana draw two, which can also be fine in matchups where there's no creatures to destroy. And then at 5 mana we've got a Slimefoot's Survey, which is a way of ramping, getting two lands, not just basics, lands with basic land types, so we can get our Survey lands like Hedge Maze, Commercial District, and Thundering Falls. And then we'll most likely have three basic land types in play, look at the top three to keep one on top. And then even if it's a card we don't like, we can still surveil it into the graveyard thanks to all those Surveil triggers. So that also gives us a lot of extra card selection to find the next big play. And of course a lot of fun if we can also copy it with a recording. 
And topping off our curve, there's Season of Weaving, and all three modes are incredibly relevant, can mix and match depending on the situation. Sometimes we just want to draw five cards with it, sometimes we can create a token copy of our cursed recording, and can also return each a non-land, non-token permanent to its owner's hand. So this will not bounce our token copies of cursed recording, but it will bounce the original cursed recording back to hand, but that can sometimes be an advantage, since that's the one that's most likely to have the most time counters on it, so resetting it is not a bad idea, and then we'll still get to keep all the token copies that we made with Season of Weaving, or maybe our three steps ahead. And then of course copying Season of Weaving with a curse recording can also get pretty silly. And then a doppelgang, as we mentioned, or eventual win condition, either copying our vine stock or maybe opposing permanents to help close out the game, but can also use it to ramp in the early turns if we're missing other ramp cards just by copying some lands. And then looking at our lands, we've got 26 total, since we don't really want to miss land drops in this deck. Six of the survey lands can also help sculpt or draw early on, and can find them with a survey. Then we've got two copies of Fabled Passage, which can access all three colors with at least one of each basics. And then we've got some uh, untapped blue-red lands, which are pretty important early against all the aggro decks, so we can keep up our interaction. So Force Power Bluff for Shivan Reef, and then uh, two Carpluzen Forest as a few more untapped sources, as well as Divine Stocks, which are important win conditions as well. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. We have what looks like a Keeper. Surveil, Fine Stock is a good one to keep in general, since we can eventually copy it to turn into a win condition. And then can play it now. Next turn, play Kicked Exploration. Maybe surveilling in the process. Put on blue white. And which variety of blue whites? Chart of course, so it's gonna be the uh, Oculus type of deck. Hotty Jin discarded, so they can try and reanimate that next turn. Alright, so we'll pass. Prankster looking for a helping hand, maybe, and they found it. So they can already bring back Haughty Jin. Right, let's see what we can find. Fires of Victory looks good. So that we can kick next turn, dealing four damage. Probably don't need another Vine Stock. And the three steps ahead seems fine. It's no cursed recording, but it is quite flexible. And then definitely gonna main phase this. Opponent's got six cards in graveyards in case they want to hard cast an Oculus, but they're just gonna helping hand back another Haughty Jin. And this time they'll have some mana left over. Oh, probably just gonna bounce it now. And a Season of Weaving seems good too. Do it now so they don't get the discount in their turn. Opponent's gonna prankster again. Okay, so if they replay it, I'll probably have to counter it. And hope they don't have a counter spell back. That worked. Prankster's fine. Alright, so we've got a window to draw five. Found a doppelgang, although can maybe develop our mana with survey first. But it does have another hot gin now. So may need to just copy it a bunch with doppelgang. Okay, 
Ooh, nice course recording. So I can play the recording and then copy the paraclasm. Seems like a good starting point. Do we want to do anything beforehand? I guess I could cast Exploration with Kicker. Does our opponent have counter spells? Sometimes they play Phantom Interference, opponents playing No More Lies. They could have both. So, potentially a reason to keep some mana available. The downside of playing Exploration with Recording in play, of course, is that we pick up an extra counter when we could maybe avoid it otherwise. But yeah, let's just play it safe. I think with Doppelgang, we should be good to go. So now we can pay for a Phantom Interference. Opponent actually with a Soul Partition on the recording, that's fine. Still need to Paraclasm, I guess. I could have responded to the trigger with the Kicked Exploration, since then it wouldn't have gotten copied, and then I could have still cast a Paraclasm with a double defect to wipe the board. Now I can only play Exploration without Kicker, but I think we'll survive. Is their opponent's currently missing a threat? But it looks like they have a way to bring Hotijin back once again. Or no, this is uh, Oculus exiling cars from the graveyard. At least Oculus doesn't kill us quite as quickly. And it's potentially also more fun to copy with Doppelgang, so don't really mind. Cast the exploration. And don't need more lands. Opponent does get to manifest. If they manifest the Haughty Djinn, that could be quite scary. Brotherhood's end to the draw. So, I'm still fine playing the control role for a while. Yeah, are we dead to a Haughty Djinn here? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, we would still survive, so... Can maybe survey. Get some surveil lanes. And then... Could put Torch the Tower on top with a plan of milling it if we don't like it, or could do the same with a land. Since we don't particularly want to draw those, finding a way to, once again, copy the curse recording could be more fun. Alright, just a pair of pranksters, that's fine. And our opponent gets to manifest dread. And yeah, they are playing Phantom Interference, so... If I try and go for Recording and Brotherhood's End, I can still pay for their various conditional counter spells. Although they could have a three steps ahead, but then... I guess um, at least one Brotherhood's End will still resolve, opponent with another Soul Partition instead. But we still get to wipe the board in the meantime. Alright. Opponent also playing the Blue Overlord. Definitely want to replay recording before we doppelgang. So hopefully they don't find another big threat in the meantime. So we'll see if this resolves. Could also get busy with a vine stalk, but don't want to run into more creature removal. And then copying the vine stalk with doppelgang can also be its own win condition. Alright, I guess we'll go for it now. Could be a little bit more patient too. Any cards on the bottom we know about. So how much mana do we have if we were to tap everything? Can do x equals 4 actually. Yeah, that's gonna be good enough. Hmm. 
Could do x equals three to play around a counter spell, but one copy will resolve regardless. So copy recording, find stock, and a bunch of surveillance. All right. If they have two counter spells, I'll be sad. All right, they did have one phantom interference. Does a copy resolve? Same targets. All right, that works. So we get to surveil into our next big play, and we now have all the curse recordings we'll ever need. And another doppelgang is exactly what we're looking for. All right. Pass a turn. And the next doppelgang is going to be even more glorious. Would be lovely for the opponent to play creature as well, but even if they don't cooperate, I'll still have the vine stalks. So, use all of these. And should be able to pull off x equals 5 now. Which is probably gonna reach the token limits one way or another. Can copy all the vine stocks. Could throw in a cursed recording too. Might want to copy some untapped lands as well. Since we can actually attack with the vine stalks. This might take a second. Yeah, we've probably already reached a token limit here, so I don't know if we'll get more lands. Well, I guess we're still getting some planes here, so... So yeah, even if we had more spells in hand, with all the extra untapped lands, we could still cast them. Alright, we did reach the token limit, so Arena said no more copies for you. That's alright. Can still get in with our vine stalks. And we now have 20 cursed recordings. So the next spell we cast, we could copy 20 times. So this is where things get really silly with this deck. So these are all the vine stalks we can attack with this turn. Don't think we're going to run out anytime soon. I spared myself the surveil lands to avoid all the surveil triggers. And our opponent has seen enough. Awesome. Vine stalk crosses the finish line. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play. Our hand seems fine. Could use a couple more lanes, but can always... Uh, Draw with Cease. Can technically draw and discard with three steps ahead as well. well. Let's see what we're up against. Turn one mountain. And Heartfire Hero, so it is a red aggro. We have Fires of Victory available. But I'm probably not going to cast it unless they commit a bunch of bump spells. So we'll take one. Another Heartfire Hero. So Pyroclasm could be a good draw. Opponent playing green as well. Joint Exploration, we can play at instant speed. So yeah, don't mind passing into the Flood Maw. Another one mana answer here. If our opponent moves all in. And then Explosion on 4 could be powerful if our opponent commits more creatures. So, fine taking 4.
And then we were looking for lanes mostly. Another explosion might be overkill. So cast explosion. And then I'll have to maybe discard Season of Weaving to guarantee taking out all their creatures here. And then what else? Maybe at this point we don't need Flood Maw when we have Torch and Fires. Pyroclasm also may not be the best since our opponent already committed a bunch of creatures. So it's probably going to be a one for one. So then maybe I do prefer the flexibility of Into the Flood Maw. Of course, just uh, casting Pyroclasm would have been effective, but can expect them to enable Prowess. And our opponent explodes, pretty fitting. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and uh, what do we think of this hand? Bit of removal, sweeper, card draw, and ramp. Yeah, seems fine. Thundering Falls looking for a third land. Opponent starting with a Leyline of Hope, so some sort of life gain deck. Alright, Cease and Assist seems unnecessary, even though it is good to discard with Ill-Timed Explosion. Would rather hit or land drops. So life gain confirmed. Just gonna cast an Exploration most likely. Right, Deep Cavern Bats, potentially a reason to just take it out here. But, uh, no, we'll let it resolve. We have two removal spells anyway. But more importantly, I want to prioritize hitting my land drop next turn. And they cannot take away both explorations. So, in their seat, I would maybe take the dragon fire, since then, if we want to take out the bats, we need to use fires of victory, which is better in the late game. Could keep another fires, but now let's just look for land. Into the Flood Maw could also be a way of bouncing the Leyline, but I don't think we really care. Alright, I think I'm forced to just main phase this to try and hit a land drop. And then, yeah, even if it's a tapped one, I'll have to keep it. So not off to an ideal start. But yeah, opponent's playing a creature deck and we have a lot of removal. So we should be able to fight through all the disruption as well. As our opponent plays another bait. Probably going for the ill-timed explosion here, I would have to guess. And then I can fetch up a second blue source. No, nope, opponent takes the Torsha Tower. So now we can Explosion. Discarding... Maybe one Season of Weaving. And Season and Assists would deal a lot of damage as well. And then keep Fires of Victory to go with the Curse Recording. Could also get rid of Fires since we have more Spot Removal coming back. But uh, yeah, Fires we can also kick to draw, so it's not bad. So... Dealing 8 damage thanks to the combined mana value from Cease and Assist. That's also part of why it's in the deck. But Cease and Assist can do a couple other cool things like milling the opponents if we make enough uh, copies of the Curse Recording, since you can also target them to draw. Can also be a source of life gain or graveyard hate. Alright, so SS Channeler is a good one to exile, so it doesn't spread around its counters. Although, still kind of want to get this Cursed Recording going first. And then we can copy our next spell. Eventually we can also bounce the recording back with a Season of Weaving if we're concerned about the counters adding up. Or we can sacrifice it to bargain with Torture Tower. So we've got multiple ways of getting rid of our own recording if needed. Opponent plays the bat. So yeah, it doesn't matter too much what they take since we have multiple spot removal spells. Takes the Dragon Fire. So copying Torture Tower is still good enough to remove both of their creatures. 
And that's probably what we'll do. I'll just do it now. And then Doppelgang is going to be better once we have more mana. So not in a hurry to cast it. But let's get another Channeler. Take my draw step first. Another Doppelgang. So now if I draw a land, I'm okay just casting it for x equals 1, copying it and copying a land, for instance, or the curse recording. Yeah, just have to watch out that we don't accumulate too many counters too quickly. For now I can just take two. We're not under too much pressure. And then uh, if they play another creature, we can take two of them out with one removal spell. So yeah, again, not in a hurry, unless we want to into the Flood Maw bouncing the Ley Line, but I don't think Ley Line's doing much for them. Alright, found a land, even though it's tapped. Again, taking two is fine. The way we lose is if we keep removing their creatures one by one and we accumulate too many counters and get in an awkward spot that way. So now I could cast Doppelgang X equals 1, could also Season of Weaving, and then potentially even bounce stuff back and draw, pick up our own Cursed Recording again. I think I Doppelgang a land here just to develop my mana. And then I could choose an untapped land to still have mana available afterwards. But I think I would rather surveil. So I can copy the surveil land a bunch of times. And then a vine stalk would be fine too as an eventual win condition. So I'll keep it. And pass a turn. Now for opponent Dos, go up to 27 life. They get to give their team plus 4 plus 4 all of a sudden. So do have to be a little bit careful there. And Zoralin. Okay, so that would trigger the case. Gaining a lot of life. And then SS Channeler, when attacking, would also trigger. So that would actually pump up their team a whole bunch. Yeah, I guess we'll just end up bouncing the channeler itself as opposed to the case so we don't take damage. Should have uh, probably done this first. Alright, so we gave our opponent some life for free. That's alright. Time for Season of Weaving. Copied by the Curse Recording. Bouncing stuff back and making a copy of the curse recording, which we then get to keep in play. And the original recording will go back to hand. So now they need to replay the ley lines to keep the plus two plus two bonus. Opponent does indeed replay the ley line. And the case, so they are waiting to run their creatures out until they're a bit bigger. Which is fine by me. In the meantime, we could doppelgang again, copying the vine stock. Or we could wait for the opponent to play their creatures out, so we get to copy those as well, including maybe their ley line and case. Yeah, that sounds more fun. Do I have enough mana to play a kicked fires of victory? I do. So yeah, I'm happy if they play out a creature here. Even with the extra toughness from Leyline of Hope, we'll get to cast triple Fires of Victory, which will be plenty. Zoralan can also return a Deep Cavern Bat, since these didn't get exiled. So might see them bring back the Bat. So they do have some decent options, but with all this removal in hand, I'm not too concerned. So Channeler... Is going to pick up a counter. 
Still well within range. And Zorlin. Alright, so we can let that resolve. So now we can fire the victory. And then I want to target Zorlin first. Since that one is going to end up taking the most damage. I guess I do get to move the counter here. But we still have an extra Fires of Victory coming up, so yeah, this worked out perfectly. I guess the original one fizzles, so that one doesn't draw a card. So I'm actually glad they moved the counter, otherwise we might have missed out on the extra card. Alright, is it time to doppelgang? Do we wait? I mean, the longer we wait, the more powerful it could become. Right now we have doppelgang x equals 3 if we want it. Yeah, it may not get much better than that, honestly. At least not anytime soon. Would be nicer if our opponent had a creature out for us to copy. But we can copy Vinestalk and a bunch of other lands and then just kill them with Vinestalks pretty much. That seems good enough to me. So x equals 3. And then maybe go for the Surveillance and a Curse Recording, why not? So I guess I'm one mana short of casting, Doppelgang x equals 3 might have miscounted. Alright, well, accidentally tapped the recordings now. But we'll go for it next turn, x equals 3. Seems worth the wait. Opponent replays another Leyline. A Ruin Lurker Bats is a 5-5, five five, so a little bit too big to dragon fire right now, but it actually gives us a creature we can copy now, so I'm not too upset. And then, sure, we'll take our turn. Now we can doppelgang x equals 3. Fine stock, Bats. Do we maybe want to copy some of their enchantments too, can also start gaining life here. Yeah, maybe we actually just beat them with our own cards. Just make a bunch of these. Gain a lot of life. A bit more original than just making a bunch of vine stocks. Could also copy double ley line, but I'm sort of enjoying all the extra triggers we're getting. Pass a turn, we're at 911 with 12, 25, 25 flying lifelink creatures. Your play. Opponent with a Zorlin. And then now we could Brotherhood's Ends, copy the bunch, destroying the opponent's creatures while preserving ours. And Deep Cavern Bands can have a look. Yeah, who's the life gain deck now? Alright, so I'll clear a path to make it easy. Oh man, we could also, three steps ahead, copy the curse recording first. That's gonna be the play. Just gotta make sure I don't deck myself. Ah, that should be plenty. Make a bunch more curse recordings. I'm glad our opponent's sticking around for this ridiculousness. Alright, and then now we can maybe wipe the board. So, 
three pyroclasms is six damage, four pyroclasms is eight damage. And that'll make it easier to attack. All right, sweet. Good game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got what looks like a keeper. Double dragon fire, good against aggro. And our opponent on scavenger, so an aura deck. Could be reasonable to take out scavenger right away, so we don't need to worry about instant speed hexproof tricks. But if they're playing an aura strategy, a good way to punish them is by removing their creature in response. Right, Duelist is kind of a threat in and of itself, so don't mind taking that out. So maybe just playing it because it's got double strike, so it plays well with enchantments. Ethereal armor's next. That's fine. Anything else? I'll take three for now. Problem with casting Dragonfire is if they do have one of those flash auras, they get to punish me. Now we have a little bit of extra removal, although Torch still is only two damage now. I can take three for a few hits. Uh, another Ethereal Armor. I wouldn't be able to wait to Dragonfire with three steps ahead backup. So I'm pretty much committing to the removal spells. Alright, that worked, so that's nice. And now we've got more answers in hand. Could tap out to just draw five. Don't hate it. And then can discard a land to hand size. Alright, those two admire does have ward, but can easily pay for it. Now we've got ward four. And now ward six. Can we pay ward six? I think we can. And our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a keeper. Some early interaction if needed, and then course recording into survey is a nice curve. Actually, don't mind the exploration, can be a way of ramping and finding more lands on turn 3. Although could also fire it off here to just hit our land drops naturally. Put on blue-black. And a beast binder, so ninjas, okay. Not in a hurry to remove that. Paraclasm also a little bit short here. Alright, so opponent's going to present lots of creatures. We've got lots of removal. Karamonix is a way for them to refuel, find more rants. Don't expect too many counter spells. Alright, Nashi. Could be worth taking out. And then definitely keep lands. Doppelgang, we would eventually love to draw. We can always shuffle it back. But yeah, for now, it's a little early. And then, yeah, I think I still play the recording. Let them hit me with Nashi. Can use Paraclasm to catch back up. Although copying the survey first could be better. Could also three steps ahead copy the recording. So I've got a lot of sweet plays available. And as long as we're not taking a crazy amount of damage, that's okay. I guess the Beast Binder can also shut down artifacts here. So that's a pretty important interaction in this matchup. 
So we may need to deal with the Beast Binder after all. So yeah, the play now might be to three steps ahead in the opponent's turn, copying the recording. And then Beast Binder won't be able to shut them all down. So it's four mana to make a copy, and then I could technically counter as well, or draw and discard. So opponent goes to attack. And then in response to the trigger, we'll activate the recording. Copy the recording again. And then I still like Survey. Maybe I don't need Into the Flood Maw. We'll find other instant speed removal. And then maybe a land can go. Alright, so... Take some damage, take some poison as well. But we should be able to stabilize. Do have to watch out for those Marsh Stalkers coming back out of the graveyard, so those are good to exile. Alright, so take our turn. So this recording is shut down, so it also doesn't pick up any counters, I guess. And we found Doppelgang, so that's perfect. Maybe wait another turn to cast a Doppelgang, since yeah, we need to deal with our creatures first. So I could copy the Pyroclasm here, dealing 4 to everything. And then copy the Survey as well, to keep ramping. Seems like a good starting point. So creatures down, and then cast a survey. Getting a bunch of extra lanes. And we'll get to surveil in the process. So here I can keep a card on top that I'll surveil into the graveyard. Since I didn't particularly need to draw the Scorching Dragonfire, although it could be a decent answer to their rats coming back out of the graveyard to be fair. So I could keep Scorching Dragonfire now, or what's even better is Cease Desist, since Cease can just exile the creature from the graveyard. Or if we want to be real greedy, keep three steps ahead so we can once again copy the recordings. But yeah, we've got enough copy effects in hand, I think. And then Cease can also be card advantage if we copy it, and life gain is always nice. So yeah, Pwn's pretty behind on mana. And it's just a matter of time until we cast a doppelgang, copying a bunch of permanents to win the game. But uh, let's see if we can drag it out a little bit to make it more impressive. Lord Skitter can mess with our graveyard, that's fine. And Carmonix to refuel. Right, we'll see what Carmonix brings to the table. Another Lord Skitter. Now the opponent's rats are legendary, so not the best to copy with Doppelgang. So we probably want to wait for a different win condition. So this turn, what are we thinking? Curse recording, and then cease a bunch. Could cast a Season of Weaving, bouncing the recording back as well, and the opponent's stuff. Couple good options. Yeah, maybe copying cease once is enough for now. See what we end up drawing. Exile a few more of their creatures. Alright, plenty more exile removal. So next up, maybe just answer the two larger rants. And then, sure, lots of Season of Weaving and Drawing, and then copying another Curse Recording. Alright, 
got plenty of doppelgangs. Has a turn. Want to be careful with how many spells we cast, since we're already up to five counters here. So it's probably doppelgang time now. So hoping the opponent gives us a random rat that is not legendary, a beast binder. Not the best win condition, but uh, we can make it work. And we did not find any of our creature lands in the meantime, which would be good to copy as well. So take one. Take our turn. So yeah, this is probably my last chance to cast an instant or sorcery. Since Season of Weaving cannot bounce back the token copies, which are the ones on five counters. So doppelgang x equals three. And then Beastbinder. Probably a rat token at this point. And can go for a land as well. Can be one that's untapped, so I have still mana available. And then we can choose different lands as well. Surveil a bunch, look for our creature land. Could still potentially do something fun if we found our author, cease and desist by trying to mill the opponent with all the extra copies, but I don't think that's happening. So yeah, it would be a little awkward if our opponent does have some sort of sweeper here. So we've got plenty of tokens. Pass a turn. We've run the Relentless, is fine. Does not really synergize with Lord Skitter, it's only if you exile a creature from the battlefield that it will make a rat end of turn. And then we should just be able to turn the team sideways. Damage champions. Nowhere to run, that's fine. One token down. Now what we could also do is cast Torture Tower with Bargain, I suppose, to sacrifice the curse recording to get rid of it. So that is also potentially a way of uh removing our own curse recording, but uh, yeah, that's probably just going to break the game if we cast another doppelgang here. So let's attack. Lots of triggers. Can pay the ward. And yeah, Beastbinder only targets opposing permanence, so we cannot use it to shut down our own curse recording, which also would have been fun. Alright. So that happens. Put 
Conan on blocks. And still takes plenty of damage. Alright, that was fun. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got what looks like a Keeper. Especially good against aggro. With double torch and brotherhood's end. And then I'll keep Fabled Passage. Good to keep hitting our land drops. And we do face turn one Heartfire Hero. So no need to torch unless they play a pump spell. And white means they might be on an aura deck instead. Manifold Mouse I will take out, or I can just untap and cast Brotherhood's End, which is maybe better. We will end up taking 6 damage total, 4 from Double Strike, and then 2 more when Heartfire Hero dies. But it does mean we get to keep Torsha Tower for next turn. And then if our opponent runs out of creatures, they might be stuck with a bunch of auras in hand. Alright, and so it goes. Fabled Passage could get forests. Although I'm not in a hurry to fetch here. Right, scavenger resolves. Itali's favor is not going to resolve. Alright, so we get to see our cursed recordings in action. And this deck is just a blast to play. Probably the most fun I've had in the current standard format. Now, how competitive is the deck? It's certainly more geared towards beating creature strategies, so might struggle more against blue-white control. The domain deck with Leyline Binding exiling the curse recording could also be more annoying. So those are matchups that are probably going to be difficult in best of one, but are potentially fixable in best of three, since the core of the deck can easily switch around some of the removal spells for better answers, maybe add a few more counter spells, maybe add answers to artifacts and enchantments as opposed to creature removal. So the deck should be quite adaptable to opposing strategies as long as we can keep the core of all the copy cards and uh, if we are afraid of opposing artifact removal we could always add an extra copy of curse recording in the sideboard as well but the current iteration seems pretty well suited for the best of one ladder which is usually dominated by creature aggro decks so yeah that's gonna do it for today's gameplay wanna thank you for watching hope you enjoyed and as always have a nice day